Well, after last week's events, war has come and humans are definitely not the ones winning. Guys, camera for Wayward Pine Season 2, Episode 8, Past Judgment. I was definitely looking forward to this episode, especially after last week's episode. Really showed me what the show was capable of, but also after that awesome cliffhanger with everything that went down. And of course, like I said in my intro, we are in full war now. It was definitely humans versus Abbeys at this point, and you know, you can definitely tell that the humans aren't, you know, the ones winning. But let's just get in this episode because a lot did go down this episode. I didn't think this was as good as last week's episode, definitely will say that. I still thought this was a really good episode. It was a a bit choppy at points, but I thought overall I definitely really did enjoy it. We have three episodes left, which I can't believe it might be the entire show. I don't know if the show is going to come back for season three, which I will talk about, of course, in episode 10. But that, let's just get to, you know, get through this season first and then I'll talk about that. But let's get into this episode. So we start off, we see... Theo uh, sees, you know, everyone there, He's, he goes back into the, the lab, and he sees Carrie, he sees everyone, Carrie's asking him how his arm is, and he stumbles upon Megan's lifeless body, surrounded by a pool of blood at the lab, and Margaret's empty cell, and just as he sounds the alarm, Margaret makes her way out of the second facility, without, of course, remembering, you know, what Jason did, because as we know, Jason literally shot every single other male Abby in cold blood while they remained in their cells, and as Jason sees the murder scene for himself, Theo deduces that Margaret learned the passcode to get out, and that's she learned for herself, and I've said it before, I think that Abbeys are somewhat smarter than humans, you know, they are trying to figure out them, they're trying to observe, and I think by seeing what Theo was doing, she learned the passcode on her own, because as we know, Margaret seems like she was there to observe, that's what seems like she was there to do, she's there to observe and kind of be a spy for the other Abbeys, that's basically how I would classify Margaret in this episode, that she was there to spy for, to, for the other Abbeys, and when security forces come up shore in the basement that leads outside, Margaret is way ahead of them in the woods, jumping and parkouring over rocks and trees, and, um... We can see this is an Abby that can that can outmaneuver any type of environment, which is interesting to see. I like seeing the way that Margaret can move, but she also moves very slow, but she's also quite fast when you need to be. She's already proving her smarts by effectively confusing the guards. As two private residents descend on the streets, armed with rifles given by Xander, Margaret's able to spread her growl around them, and in a state of distraction, guns go off. They only shoot each other. I mean, that's how bad this is. That she's distracting them literally makes them shoot each other, and uh, obviously things are not going well at all. Definitely you can tell what's going on there. I thought that was definitely a very good way to start things out, and I definitely really did enjoy that. But while the rest of the town is very unaware of Margaret's presence, Theo tries to reason with Jason to alert the masses, because... Jason basically said, you know, everything's fine, remain calm, so everyone's just kind of going about their daily lives. They're not really concerned about this very much, and Theo wants to take action, because... He knows it's a dangerous situation, he knows it's a problem, he wants to do something right now. And he's saying, you know, you need to alert the mass who he believes, well, he believes a growing number of Abbeys outside the town walls are simply waiting for her to return. And that's basically what's going on, that they need to get Margaret back to the Abbeys and then maybe she'll back off. That's what she kind of thinks they're going to do, because if they don't go after the Abbeys, I've said before... If they don't go after the Abbeys, the Abbeys won't come after them, and I think that's pretty much what Theo wants to do. He kind of wants to avoid any kind of war, but Jason has already caused it, so we can't really stop him from doing anything, but you can definitely tell that he is trying to, and I definitely did like seeing that. It really sets us up for how intense this episode really does get. So we see Jason is mourning the loss of Megan now that he's lost his two biggest mentors, and I thought that was well done, definitely seeing him mourning Megan and everything. I didn't feel there was enough, honestly. I kind of wanted to see some more mourning going on. I feel like her death, it just didn't really do much. I mean, obviously it showed that no one is safe, but other than that, it didn't really do much. But Theo enlists the help of Adam, who blows believes in Margaret's ultra abilities as an Abby, and Adam's really the only other one who kind of agrees with Theo that Margaret is an Abby, and that Abby's have feelings that Abbeys aren't just creatures that they kill. They spot a trail of blood in the woods, they come across the remains of a bloodied security guard's body, believe the blood trail was meant to throw them off, and yet they end up disagreeing to where Margaret is headed, and the two split up, Theo stumbles upon the injured residents, and acts as the voice of reason to get them to end the standoff and take those hurt to the hospital, which I thought was very smart to do. I liked that we saw that, thought that definitely was very well done, I liked he was able to get them off the streets, I definitely did like seeing that, and I thought that was definitely very well done. I really did enjoy the way that was handled. Um, 
But meanwhile, we see Xander and Rebecca were, in fact, back in this episode. It was it was strange to not see them last week, but of course, most of it was either, you know, um, CJ's flashbacks or it was with in the lab, and this episode was definitely not as contained. We were outside, and I like seeing that, but there was no CJ. It definitely did feel weird that we had all those flashbacks with CJ, and yet we don't see CJ in this episode. Definitely was very strange, especially after what Jason said, you know, did we wake up too early? It does look like we're going to see him next week, which I'll get into, but Xander still attempts to play house with Rebecca, but she obviously has reg has uh, reinated her devotion to Theo ever since he was awoken, and while their marriage isn't what we used to be, we find out this huge reveal that the reason that Xander wants to Rebecca is because she's pregnant. She's pregnant with Xander's baby, and that's something that Theo does not know, and I thought this was a good twist. I like that we saw that, because obviously these two probably, uh, you know, they procreate and everything. They basically did that, and Theo will eventually find out it's not his. She figures it's best to tell him as soon as possible, and after the ensuing chaos with Margaret on the loose, Theo gives Xander an earful for handing out guns to civilians, which didn't go so well. As Rebecca tries to calm Theo down, she cannot but insist that accidents happen here, which, of course, you know, she's trying to admit that she's having a baby, but he's obviously not concerned about that right now. You know, he's very focused on doing whatever he can to stop this from happening. He's doing whatever he can to take action, because obviously no one is taking action. I like that Theo is taking charge. He's really someone that does want to take charge. He's someone that wants to end this rather than, you know, keep this war going. He wants to end this war once and for all, and I definitely did like seeing that, and she's saying, you know, that she's having Xander's baby, and I thought that definitely is very interesting that we saw that all going on, and he, she, unfortunately, Unfortunately, does not get to tell him in this episode, which kind of sucks, but... Carrie then receives very devastating news from Theo that due to the injury she sustained from a previous Abby attack to her to her um, abdomen and everything, she unfortunately is unable to have children, we find out. As we know, Jason wanted to have children, she immediately said no, and now it makes sense that she knows that she can't have children. And Carrie felt it was her destiny to procreate while reestablishing society, particularly with reigning leader Jason. She felt that they could do it together. This is something that they want to do. They have been so focused on procreation that she felt they should have procreated, and that they could, you know, have their the spawn of their you know, their own, their own spawn and everything, uh, could, you know, rebuild the world, and they could fix it together, but now that she knows she can't do that, she kind of feels a bit empty, and I really did feel bad for Carrie, what was going on here, and uh, I thought that was definitely very well done. And later we get this very good scene where Jason takes Carrie to a secret panic room of sorts, which would serve as a nursery for their future child, and I actually really did like this speech, because even though Jason is our central villain of this season, definitely he is. I mean, you could say the Abbeys are, but I, I really don't think the Abbeys really are. I think Jason's kind of made them out to be villains, and they're really not. Basically, um, he gives this whole speech about how they're the next Adam and Eve, and Carrie finally tells him that she can't have, she can't have children, and she breaks down crying while Jason seems to take the news without much emotion, yet he still offers the support as she reaffirms her love for him and I was really worried because she was the one that was so worried that something bad was going to happen to her that he was going to end up killing her or something like that you know not killing her but he was going to end up um you know sending her back into hibernation or something you know into uh stasis or something I really didn't know what was going to happen there I thought that definitely was very interesting but now with the town alert students at the academy are advised to take shelter at the school and Frank and his sister Lucy begin to worry while some fellow classmates go off uh to smash basically because, you know, it's going to be the end of the world, and when you saw those two uh, classmates having sex, I'm like, they're going to die. I literally thought they were trying to rip off, like, a horror film, which was interesting to see, because, again, I don't think the Abbeys are bad, but then when you do stuff like that, it makes me think that they are, and... Frank and Lucy instead decide to go seek help from Rebecca because that's what makes Lucy feel most comfortable. Now, normally I'd say, okay, that's great, go over there, but this is a very dangerous situation. They literally go through the woods where they could be killed at any time, and I was, like, terrified that someone's gonna happen. The second that Lucy said, I want to go see Rebecca, I'm like, okay, you're gonna die. I honestly thought that Lucy was gonna die here. I thought they were gonna kill her off, and... Margaret remains hidden, but instantly recognizes Frank as the one by the carousel, because that's, of course, how this all started. Remember, Frank encountered Margaret, and he recognizes her, she recognizes him, and the two safely take refuge inside Rebecca's salon while Margaret is pouncing all over the storefront roofs, and I like that she didn't do anything to Frank, because, again, she's not there to hurt them. She's there to just observe them, and as the guards begin to fire on her, she airbonds them all into thin air as some other residents are seeking shelter. Xander breaks out some hidden rifles he stowed away before the first harvest 
this attack, and considering that Rebecca was originally hired to design the town, she tries to surmise any weak spots along the border while Margaret could have seeped in from, basically, because obviously it's a very dangerous what's going on here, and um, on their way back from getting her architectural plans, Rebecca spots Margaret in the streets. Margaret instantly recognizes Rebecca to be carrying a child, but before she could attack, Xander shoots her in the arm from afar, and she just runs. She actually doesn't do anything. She runs off, and... I think it's kind of because she saw that Rebecca was pregnant. She wanted them to have a happy life and everything. I kind of saw it as that. Because, again, these Abbeys do have emotions. And there are things that they can relate to. I mean, Margaret, I'm sure, has seen people pregnant. And she has a family of her own. And that's something I think they did really well in this episode. Is they showed that Margaret does have a family of her own. And she does show mercy. And she's not just some merciless Abbey that's just going to kill them. That's not who Margaret is at all. And I like that we saw that very well here. So, Rebecca, at this point, was terrified. She thought she was going to die. We see Rebecca's life flashing before her. She kisses Xander for saving her, and I actually like the direction they're going. I like that she's not going to end up with Theo, because honestly, I don't think Theo and Rebecca can be together in this situation. He's the one to save the town. He's the one that's going to turn things around. And I got to say, Rebecca and Xander is so much more interesting than whatever was going on between Teresa and Adam. That is so much more interesting. This is just so much more interesting what's going on here. And in her findings, Rebecca determined that Margaret came in through an old pipe system that was part of the original Wayward Pines, and that's how she got there. So we cut to Margaret finding the pipe to escape, but not before Adam already has his rifle drawn toward her. And we then flash back to last week's episode, where Adam pleads with Jason that returning Margaret to the others will only quell the situation. And with no other option, Adam lets Margaret leave. Even though he knows it's going to make things worse, there's really nothing else they can do. I mean, they, you know, showed her mercy, they've done everything they can, there's nothing else they can do. And curious as to where the pipes lead, Adam drops his weapons, enters the pipe, and sometime later, Jason, Rebecca, and their crew arrive at the pipe, and upon hearing growls, they throw some grenades down the tube. Adam emerges on the other side. He's met with a pack of wild abbeys, but show resistance upon Margaret's command, and the injured Margaret that makes her way upon a hill collapses, is comforted by two other male abbeys, and we flash back to the brutal hunting of abbeys by the order of David and Margaret closed her eyes, leaving her fate up in the air, and we don't know if she died or not. We don't actually know what happened there, and... I thought that definitely was very interesting the way that was all done, and uh, I, I just thought overall that was definitely very interesting the way that ended, because we don't know if Margaret is dead or not. And honestly, I felt kind of bad for Margaret, because we see she goes to these two male abbeys. She, one of them could very well be her husband. I kind of got the sense that one of them was her husband and one of them was her son, and she could be dead for all we know. And again, just the sense that Margaret has a family of her own really takes her from being a monster to a full-fledged character, and I like that they show that these abbeys while they may attack, they're not monsters. And I think that's something they're showing very well. They're showing who Abbeys really are. They're showing that they're not bad people, and they really just there to observe. That's really what I think is going on. I think that overall is very interesting. But that is how this episode ends. I thought it was a very good ending overall, but let's just get into uh, this episode and why things can happen next week. So we have two episodes left, guys, and really, I have no idea what's going to happen in these next two episodes. Uh, there is this scene, I forgot to talk about, though, where Theo has this conversation with uh, Frank, and he literally says to Frank that, you know, Frank asks, are we dead? And Theo says, I don't know. And honestly, yeah, they pretty much know that their time is running out. It very much seems like the human's time is running out. But there's also this thing that's brought up in the promo next week that they might all go back into stasis, which I kind of feel like would be a good ending for them. The show. I don't think that I, that makes me. To me, I'm thinking that the show is going to end. I don't think there's going to be a season three. I think season two, they're going to end it then because this was supposed to be a mini series anyway. They're going to end after season two, is what I'm thinking they're going to do, but I don't know. Maybe they won't. Maybe they will. I don't really know. Um,. But things really are getting crazy here. Now, Margaret, is Margaret dead? I don't really know. If Margaret's dead, then this has really just gotten a lot worse because, obviously, her family's going to come after them. Uh, things are just going to get really bad, and I don't know what's going to happen there. It looks like next week, Theo is dead set on killing Jason. Is he going to kill Jason? I don't know, but now that we know what happened with Carrie, I kind of feel bad for Jason, but Jason didn't seem to give a shit. He didn't seem to give a shit that Carrie, you know, had this baby. I mean, obviously, he comforted her, but he didn't seem to care that Carrie, you know, his own wife can't have children. He didn't seem to care about it at all, and I thought that was just really interesting. The fact that he didn't really seem to give a shit. Could you think he would, and he just really didn't seem to care? You know, I think it's 
Maybe it's because uh, Megan just died and he's still, you know, trying to deal with that. But I'm going to call bullshit and just say that, you know, your own wife can't reproduce and you're just going to react that way. I think it's really dumb. I like the direction we're going with Xander and Rebecca. I was a bit on the fence about these two getting together, but I honestly really do like it. I think it makes sense. The fact that she's pregnant, the fact she doesn't want to tell Theo, I totally do understand. Is Theo going to find out? I don't know if she's going to get that chance to tell him. I mean, I'm sure she will at some point. But again, I don't really think these two who can be together. After what we've seen, I think Theo is the one to fix the town. He's the one to turn things around. He's the one that's going to make that final decision. I think whatever happens, we're going to end the season with Theo in charge. That's what's going to happen. Theo's not going to die. He's not going to Ethan, you know, he's, he's not going to uh, Ethan Burke himself. He's going to, I think he's going to be the one that is going to restore the town. He's going to be in charge, and I definitely think that's the direction that we're headed, that whatever happens, Jason's going to be dethroned, and Theo's going to be the one to restore the town. I really do think that's what's going to happen there. Uh, if you guys don't know, this episode was actually directed by the daughter of David Lynch, which I thought was interesting, um, Jennifer Lynch, and you definitely kind of got this style here at some point, I thought that definitely was well done, uh, my only complaint with this episode is no CJ, no CJ in this episode, I thought there was a little bit, a little just inconvenience, and also, I thought there was a little too much silly stuff, like, the decision for the teenagers to just go, I get that it's the end of the world, but that's, you're literally gonna go in the woods and do that, no, you go to the bedroom, you, you, that's what you do, you go to a bedroom, you lock the door, and you smash, you don't smash in the woods, I don't know why they thought this would be a good idea, I don't know who decided to come up with this idea, but you don't go to the woods to have sex when there's Abby's literally everywhere, and you could be slaughtered by any of them, I mean, someone was in fact slaughtered, there was a security guard killed, now luckily those kids weren't slaughtered, Slaughtered, but I was thinking, okay, they're probably going to get slaughtered, and that didn't actually happen. But overall, guys, other than that, let me know what you guys saw this episode. Love to hear your thoughts on it. I really did enjoy this episode overall. Thought there was some really good stuff going on here. At this point, things are just in, it's set in motion for the next two episodes, and things are really just getting crazier and crazier. You know, war is broken out, and I don't really know what's going to happen these next two episodes, but that's my review. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in the next one, which will be for the second part of the season premiere of Mr. Robot. Of course, I reviewed the first part if you guys want to check that out but i will review the second part uh probably tonight because it's actually already up and i'm gonna probably watch it early and i will see you guys for that okay bye